Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the embroidery for uh, Spirit Elsa, and I will be using the MB7 from Janome. This is part of my series on making Elsa. This is going to be the first part on making her. So let's just jump right into materials. For this project, I will be using five colors of silky satin from Shannon Fabrics, matching embroidery thread from Floriani, which is not pictured because it's currently threaded in my embroidery machine, Floriani Dream Weave Ultra, Floriani Heat and Stay Stabilizer, RK Embroidery Perfection Tape, Embellish Iridescent Embroidery Mylar, Embellish Rinse Away Mesh, and Chiffon. Also, scissors and iron. Uh, the hoop size, anything else that you would use for embroidery. I digitized all the embroidery files on the Floriani Total Control U software, and the files will be available as a June 2020 Patreon reward and then be available to purchase in July on my website. Let's start with the back embroidery piece. At the time of recording this video, I did not have a pattern drafted for the bodice and sleeves. So in order to stitch those pieces out, I pre-cut chiffon larger than what I would need for the back. I cut a 30 inch by 15 inch piece and I placed the embroidery in the middle near the top. I cut out a piece of embroider em embellish rinse away mesh large enough to cover the embroidery. And then with a cotton pressing cloth and my iron set to cotton, I adhered the stabilizer to the chiffon. Since, since chiffon is see-through, I used the rinse away stabilizer so that there would be no stabilizer pieces visible on the finished garment. So now I'm going to place the mylar on top of the chiffon and place all three later layers into my 126 millimeter by 110 millimeter hoop. For this step, I will be using the RNK Embroidery Perfection Tape to fold the chiffon up and keep it out of the way of the embroidery. For the sleeves, I repeated this exact same process, except instead of placing the embroidery near the top middle of a 30 inch wide by 15 inch long piece of fabric, I flipped the measurements and stitched them out on a 15 inch wide piece that was about 30 inches long, and I made the design a few inches from the top so that I'd have room for seam allowance. Once the embroidery is done, it's time to clean up the design by snipping threads and then we can slowly tear the mylar off. I do a combination of tearing and cutting it off with tiny scissors to ensure that I snip the mylar and not the actual, actual embroidery design. Once that's all cleaned up, I'm going to trim away the majority of the wet and stay to make the rinsing off process faster. This also means using less water and it'll take less time to dry. Now for the V-shaped embroidery pieces on Elsa's bodice. I will note these are not screen accurate, nor is any of this costume. As per usual, I'm taking the base art and adding my own layer of expression and detail over it. So for this piece, I cut out pieces of white silky satin larger than my 240 by 200 millimeter hoop. And then I cut out the same size of Dreamweave Ultra. This is an interfacing that will adhere to my fabric to create strength for the dense embroidery I'm about to stitch onto it. I will also be using this as an interfacing for the bodice when I get around to that video. Okay, so after I iron this on with my iron at a medium setting, I'll not, I will now iron on the heat and stay stabilizer, again with my iron set at medium. Now, just like with the snowflake, I'll be placing my mylar on top of the satin and then place the entire thing inside the hoop. Now enjoy 23 minutes of embroidery in under a minute.
Now time to remove the embroidery from the hoop. So I started out by just cutting through all of the layers and I didn't like the leftover mylar hanging out. So I decided to once again slowly tear away the mylar first and then clean this up by using tiny scissors to trim the mylar as close to the embroidery as I could. Once the mylar was removed, I then flipped over my embroidery and slowly teared away the stabilizer. If you rip this away too quickly, there can be pieces left over that are just more difficult to pull out. So I like to do this super slow and precise. So now that all of the stabilizer mylar has been torn away, but the Dreamweave Ultra should still be intact, I cut each piece out being very careful not to cut into my embroidery. I actually don't have footage of me cutting this out, but in the next video when I do the diamonds, you'll get to see how I cut out my embroidery. The last piece of embroidery is the diamonds that are seen all over the dress, bodice, and cape. I designed four different sizes of these and only used three sizes for the costume, but I stitched these out in all five colors of satin. The exact numbers and sizes will be included with the files on Patreon or with purchasing them. It's a lot of information and to keep this video around 10 minutes long, I will refrain from speaking all of it. So I skipped the Dreamweave Ultra and the mylar for the diamonds and I just stick to the heat and stay for stability while stitching. Each hoop took about 45 minutes to stitch out so my embroidery machine was running for at least two days over eight hours just while stitching the diamonds. The overall time for all of the embroidery was about 25 hours. Once I've uh, adhered the stitch the stabilizer. I'm going to hoop it and put it on the machine and here's about 20 or so minutes of embroidery in less than one minute. Excuse me for the inconsistency in color. I did do all of the diamonds the same, so like the purple versus the white doesn't really affect um, the overall outcome. It just, this is just to give you the information and I happen to record it on different colors. So for the diamonds, now that they are done stitching out, I'm actually going to keep the stabilizer on them and cut through all of the layers, uh, the, both the satin and the stabilizer, and then I actually cut the diamond out um, individually using applique scissors and I cut each of them out individually and then um, in the next coming videos on how I actually make Elsa you'll see how I adhere them to um, the dress and how I embellish them but for the purpose of this video I basically cut everything out with my larger scissors and then I will go in with my smaller scissors to do the detail cutting and I do it this way so that I don't accidentally cut through the stitching. Um, so yeah, I do this for all of the um, diamonds and now you've learned how I've done all the embroidery, I will share with you some of the, um, the embroidery that I've already finished. And I hope you guys liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. I am trying to keep these to be not super long, but if you did like this video and you would like to see how I made the rest of Elsa, please subscribe to my channel. Or if you just like Disney princess costumes or big ball gowns, like subscribe to my channel. Um, and until the next video, happy sewing.